What is the Florida Gator offense going to look like in 2023? No more Anthony Richardson. He's gone to the NFL, entering to the fray, transfer quarterback from Wisconsin, Graham Mertz. Now, there's still some discussion about, is it going to be Graham Mertz, the starting quarterback? I wholeheartedly believe that he will be your guy for game one. So that's the conversation we're going to operate under right now, is he's going to be your QB1. So, what will it look like? Back to the question at hand. Well, first and foremost, it is going to be a run first operation. Last year was no different. Billy Napier ran the football 55% of the time. Now, a part of that was AR on some quarterback runs. Maybe they were designed, maybe they weren't at times, but even so, that fraction is gone. Expect that to be replaced with a heavy dose of Montreal Johnson and a heavy dose of Trevor Etienne. Okay, they're going to see the football a whole heck of a lot. They are your best offensive players. They are going to have their say on each and every football game that Florida plays in. So, with Graham Mertz being quarterback now, the hope is that running the football effectively, like they did a season ago, both these cats were over five yards a carry, that's going to make for an easier picture for Graham Mertz to throw to. Because when you run the football effectively, like I expect Florida to do in 2023, that makes it very difficult to play with an honest number of players in the box. Now, the box is just football terminology for playing up near the line of scrimmage. Your linebackers, your defensive linemen. And when I say keeping it honest, meaning if you were to be dishonest, that means you take a safety and roll them up. Or you have another defensive back and roll them in there. So you have extra numbers close to the line of scrimmage because Trevor Etienne and Montreal Johnson have been eating your lunch for the last couple of quarters. You're tired of getting run on. So when you add more numbers up near the line of scrimmage, common sense would tell you there are less defenders on the back end to guard your receivers. So the hope is if you run the football effectively and run the football consistently, Graham Mertz's job gets a whole lot easier. We'll talk about this more here in just a second. Make sure you're subscribed to the On3 YouTube channel. We talk college football every single day here on The Hard Count. We are less than 20 days away now from the college football season getting rolling. Lock it in. We are live Tuesday, soon to be Wednesday, and Thursday, all at 11 a.m. Eastern. We want y'all a part of this. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on the gram at JD Piquel. Appreciate y'all for that. So thank you for doing that. So as I was saying, with Florida, it's going to be run first, can be run often, run consistently. But at the same exact time, there's some other variables that go into this offense and being successful in 23. Because there's a lot of talk about Graham Mertz. I mean, Florida Twitter went nuts when Graham Mertz was transferring from Wisconsin to Florida. There was some feeling internally of like, oh man, we, we got Graham Mertz. That, that's who we got out of the portal? Guy threw 19 touchdowns, 10 interceptions last year. That's the answer with AR, a top 10 draft pick? That's, that's going to be our guy in 2023? I understand the concern. I understand the, fr the frustrations. But that is not totally the way that I would look at this if I'm a Florida Gator fan. Because Graham Mertz is not going to be asked to win you football games week in and week out at Florida. Now, he's going to have to make plays. He's going to have to do his job. But like I was saying, this whole premise of this offensive philosophy for Billy Napier is running the football. In addition to that, you need to be able to have the offensive line situated how it needs to be, which is a pretty simplistic statement, but if you can't win up front, you can't run the football. And if we can't win up front and, and run the football, then I also don't feel great about how our offensive line is set up to protect Graham Mertz. So to put it differently, you need to have this offensive line be solid. I don't need them to be the best offensive line in the SEC, but I do need them to be solid to allow the running backs to do their thing. And when we go play action, to protect Graham Mertz and give him time. So that's a huge, huge variable for this offense to be successful for any offense, but especially the way that Florida wants to operate with how much they want to probably go play action, how much they want to run the football. On top of that, we need to win at wide receiver. When we get one-on-one, -on -one, Eugene Wilson, Andy Jean, Ricky Pearsall, whoever it is, we need to be able to win our matchup and get open. Because in the pass game, I think it's going to be a lot of quick game, meaning, hey, Graham Mertz, maybe if you're in the pistol or if you're playing in the gun, catch, set, get your eyes there, throw. Ball is out real quick. We're not doing a whole lot of five-step drop and a hitch, throw it deep. Like We may do some of that, but a lot of that is going to come when we've set it up. So wide receivers, we got to win. And when we have our shots, like I was just saying, when that defense does commit too much to the run game, we want to make them pay, we have to win our matchup because we may not get a ton of those throughout the game. 
There's probably going to be three or four shots this Florida team takes throughout the course of a game, and we have to be on point on the money when that happens, both at quarterback and at the wide receiver position. If we have a shot deep because the safety's rolled up and then the corner's playing outside and we're impressed and we like what we got on the outside, but we don't win, either we're throwing the ball away, we're checking it down. Bottom line, that's a big play that we did not get at Florida. We need those. We need those when we can get them. Because this offense this coming season, it's not going to be so flashy. And there were times last year where AR was just him. Like the Utah game is a great example. He just straight up took over. But this is going to be a lot more substance over flash in 2023 for the Gators. That's going to be the approach. It's going to be run the football, Montreal Johnson right, Trevor Etienne left. Put the ball out quick to Ricky Pearsall, get the ball to Eugene Wilson over here, get the ball to Andy Jean here. You know, like had a dink and dunk, kind of quick shots, quick darts all over the field. We're going to lull the defense to sleep. When we have our shot, we're going to take it. And what that does for Florida from a game plan perspective, when you play those high-scoring teams, when you play those Tennessees that, that can go and score 40 on you real quick, they're not able to be on the field if your offense is doing what they're, what they're supposed to do. Florida wants to put together 10-play drives. They want to take the air out of the football. They want to make sure that Joe Milton has to watch the game on the sideline for as long as possible. Give them as few opportunities as possible to go and score points because your offense is taking so much time off the clock. It's not an effort to be slow. It's an effort to control the tempo of the game and dictate terms. Now, here's one of the biggest pieces when it comes to Florida's success offensively. The success defensively under Austin Armstrong with this new defense that's going to have more depth. The reason why I say that, for Florida, a lot of what they do offensively is going to be built to drive the game and stay in their comfort zone. It's it's a very tricky situation for Billy Napier and company and for Graham Mertz and company if they get down 17-0. This operation isn't built to play from behind. Nobody wants to play from behind in college football, but there are some teams that can score a little bit more in bunches. That's not going to be how Florida wants to operate. If we're down 17-0 in the third quarter, well, it becomes a little bit more difficult for us to just kind of play our game plan. Then we might ask Graham Mertz to throw the ball around the yard a little bit more. Then we might ask our receivers to win a little bit more consistently on the outside and be more vertical threats. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm saying that's not the world that Billy Napier wants to live in in 2023. So for Florida, I'll say it one more time. The strategy, the philosophy for them in 2023 is substance over flash. Is it going to be a lot of sports center top 10, four verticals kind of plays? Like maybe not. But if you can get five yards of carry like you did last year, if you can protect your quarterback on play action and you can win on the outside and the defense puts you in position to be successful, series in and series out, that's the world that Florida wants to live in. And if that happens, Florida will be more than fine and surprise a lot of people if they execute and get those variables in place. So I'm excited to see it. Big year, year two under Billy Napier and company. It's going to be a lot of fun. Almost college football season. Make sure you're locked in here. Make sure you're subscribed. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.